my name is Shinola from Kitchen. Welcome to Pitch Start with Founders. Today we are with Joshua Sue from Jocom. Jocom is an e-commerce platform specialized, specialized in online shopping and groceries. Welcome to Pitch Start with Founders, Joshua. Thank you, thank you for joining us. Yep, thank you, Shinola, for your time. Maybe and we can start off by telling us um, how you started off Jocom and your background. Great, thanks. Okay, first of all, thanks Pichin and thanks for the team and really thanks for you guys for having us today. And my name is Joshua and I'm CEO of Jocom and founder of Jocom as well. Um, basically, Jocom started as a, as a grocery platform. Previously. Before we started grocery, we were actually doing B2B. Most of our business actually started as a restaurants, hotels and canteens and cafeterias. And we actually started from there and then we moved into platforms and we we're doing B2C with platforms like Lana Street, Presto Mall, and also like uh, Lazada and Shopee as well. So basically, Jocom actually built an ecosystem to connect to all the platforms to do all the groceries online and helping platforms to supply them the 80% of the groceries on their category itself in the platform. So Jocom actually started back in 2016, 2015, where we actually revamped our our, our, our app. Previously, we were actually doing Mother's Day for start, actually. Oh, okay. you know? Yeah, we were doing Mother's Day for start and we were doing B2B for restaurants and hotels. It was so tough at the time when, when we started. We still remember that uh, people said, hey, grocery online doesn't work. Why? Because I will go to Pasar Malam to buy things, I will go to Pasar Pagi to buy things. But at the end of the day, like today is 2020, things actually move differently and people still buy things online and even groceries from us as well. So we felt that this is a change of trend of e commerce and this is why that we felt that today the trend of e-commerce has changed to online, that allowing us everyone to buy groceries online as well. Yeah, you're, you're definitely following the right trend. Uh, and, and personally, I think the app is fantastic for what it needs to do. Yep. So what about yourself? <coughs> Tell me a little bit more about your entrepreneurial uh, experience, wow. your journey. People um, are usually very curious to see how you got here. And, and it's always useful to uh, highlight the lows, the highs, the everything. Uh -huh. Um, yep, back in, um, I was actually a programmer of profession and I was actually working in a US based company since when I graduated. And I still remember the time that um, where we were started as a programming to develop some projects with some big corporations. Okay. And Jocom actually started as a, as a, back in 2009, 2010, where myself is, we started as a programmer solution provider for big corporates in Malaysia. After we developed, we developed the apps itself or developed the software itself, we felt that we actually like giving a baby away. You know oh. what I mean? Yeah, it's like, it's like you develop such a good yes. program and then you start to give it to people and it becomes very upsetting. Hence, that's why me and my partner, co-founder, uh, Agnes, decided that we should start an e-commerce. Why? Because we found that a lot of people actually want to have an app and they, but they can't pay for the luxury of the app development cost itself. So, developing an app is actually not easy, but it's actually not, not cheap as well. But they expect to be like a two-figure type of like value of cost that you can develop an app for, which actually is not that small. Yes. Hence, we found that since everyone wants to sell things online using their, their brand and everything else, we created an e-commerce platform. I see. Yep, so that's how grocery platform came about. When we started the grocery platform, we actually also have a chance to say, if we were to do e-commerce, should we do Electronics and gadget. We said nope. Uh, you should probably lose another that. If you want to do a clothing and cloth and other women's uh, preferences, you probably lose Zara. So that's how we came up with um, groceries. Okay. One of the hardest and niche market. Yeah. It is. You're right. It's. It's. A, I think very a hard market to um, get command of. Yeah. What I would like to ask you is what sets you apart from the other platforms out there, um, namely, um, you know. Previously, I, I used Tesco.com mm. uh, and what, what's the difference and what sets you apart? Um, basically, I guess what happens to the hypermarkets or other models that is that most of them actually have, in, in the grocery industry itself, the landscape in Malaysia, there are some players who actually we call it the concierge model yeah. and some we call it the, the online model but eventually there's no a pure play model. Pure play model means that you're fully end-to-end -end, and you don't have a brick and mortar store and you're fully online. So Jocom is actually one of the one that actually doesn't do offline at all. We only do online. So we have pure play online and into the e-commerce uh, landscape. So we are much more different from having like a concierge model or the other models is that the unique standpoint of us is that 
we only run a warehouse of, we call it a shadow fulfillment. So the shadow fulfillment itself allows us to have the online SKUs be placed on the web or the app, and then everything that, that's actually ordered on the app, the web, and the check, out, check out baskets, we will deliver them to, to their doorstep in 24 hours. So ours is actually much more like a, um, it's like a, you are trying to buy everything at one go, and then we deliver into your house in the next day. And the model is actually we own our own end-to-end -end solution. There are a lot of platforms that actually they don't end, own their inventory. Some they don't own their the delivery team. Some they don't own the particular system here and there. But they only own owns the platform. So ours actually we own the platform. We own the procurement guys. We own the the guy who pack for you. The guy who send to the doorstep, press the bell on your door, and sign the security guard. Entrance is actually all very on your options. Yeah, yeah, end to end. So I'm thinking your costs is probably the most cost effective out there. Uh, we shouldn't say that, but thanks to my family business that actually has a 40 years in logistic right. industry, we're able to cut some really good corners. And yeah. for us to actually make our delivery team and our fleet to be uh, sustainable, we actually made a different kind of uh, mechanics around it. So the way how we do it is we actually charge you six fifty per delivery. Oh, wow. That actually gives you the whole basket size or whole hundred kilos of goods that deliver to your home in six fifty. If you buy a piece of rubber from me and you pay me six fifty, I'll still deliver to your house. But if you want to buy a can of coke by paying six fifty, you probably go to Seven Eleven or yes. convenience stores to buy one. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about your product mix. Uh, I'm always curious to see um, how you are um, placed. How many SKUs you have? Yep and um, how it compares to other online platforms on there. Do I just order on my mobile? Can I find you anywhere else like Lazada or Shopee or 11th yeah. Street? So basically, um, what happened was uh, Jocom was in the start, we actually didn't have the um, luxury to actually expand as a, as a very big brand by itself. So we decided that to work in the ecosystem way. And we built our own ecosystem through all the platforms that we actually work with. We were being invited by the first platform, which is the 11th Street, which is now become Presto Mall. We were being invited by 11th Street to become supply 80% of their groceries to them. And including our app is running at the same time. So, Jocom itself has about more than 15,000 SKUs, but we only put up 20% of the SKUs that 80% of people buy, the 2080 route. Right. Although we have 15,000 SKU, the problem is that, you see, let's say I put it this way. Let's say this is Wolf's ice cream, and this is actually Nestle's ice cream. And this is actually called ABC ice cream. We won't put the ABC ice cream, we'll put the walls and Nestle ice cream. Yes. Because these are the two things that people have been known for a long time. It's like you're asking me, should I buy Milo over tin or maybe um, ABC chocolate drink? So you probably buy Nestle and Milo, but you won't buy the ABC chocolate drink. So this is why we have a lot of different kind of SKUs, but at the end of the day, we still have to make sure that the SKUs that we put in is people that they would like to buy. So FMCG Goods is actually one of the products that is actually running very fast in our platform. Yeah. And they are the one that really drive, really have heavy drive and strong marketing on the billboards and everywhere that you drive through. That make us different from others and we actually help them to build the stores even on the platform itself. So there's one time that I still remember that the brand owners themselves want us to actually run the stores in each of our platform like Lazada, Shopee and, and 11th Street, Q10 and Ashoku Shop. So, we actually run a shop inside all the brands' official stores. The brands that actually list in Jocom supermarket as well. Yeah. So that's why our, our app and also our platform that we work with is a very different model. We felt that because since you are, you are part and parcel of my, my supermarket, we also help you to list your products in the official store as well that control by us and fulfilled by us as well. Right, yeah. right. That's very interesting. You're actually tapping into all the different types of models that you yes. have. Yes to ensure the success of your own business yes, as well. Because the, the, when we started, we don't think that fighting is actually not the right time. Yeah. Burning money is not the right way as well. Yeah. And especially in groceries, if you burn or you're trying to discount the price of the item, the brand owners will look for you. Right. It's like, for instance, like if you try to try to sell a Coke for $1, one or, or 10 cents, the Coke guys will come and look for you. You say you're dropping my price and it's actually devaluing my product. So that's why grocery industry is actually a very, very niche market where you have the chance to not need to put too much discount in a controlled manner. You're still able to make decent profits and profitable market. Yes, good, good. So tell me, what is your typical day like when Joshua Siu wakes up oh. in the morning? What is your typical day? Gee, um, seriously speaking, uh, 
we work till day and night. Okay. And for us, for me myself, we work about 18 hours a day. Okay. Roughly. Okay. But going home to sleep and wake up the next day, refresh and work again the next day is actually always the best thing. Why? Because you see, every entrepreneurship spirit is all about the passion. Yes. If you don't have a passion to work for something, there's no passion for you to start to do anything. Right. So if you like every day you feel like you are, I don't know, I wake up from my bed, I'm actually lazy to wake up from my bed, and things like that happens, it will become very, very uh, annoying. So hence that's why the passion of us actually running Jocom is that every day we wake up fresh and keep on doing what we are doing and continue the dream that we actually went through. Correct, correct. So tell me, uh, have you got any mentors who your business inspiration is? Um, mentors, we actually, we actually, me, myself and Anna, actually we have uh, one or two mentors, but we, they are in a different kind of business. Okay. But I think one of the mentors that we really, really look at is very, very um, nice is that those who really care. But some of them, not really, they kind of like really nice, but I felt that at the end of the day, it's about how you communicate and how you work with each other. But of course, uh, yes, we do start with some one or two mentors we will see. And now, I think what we have gone through mentors is that we like to speak with a lot of different kind of businessmen and different kind of uh, players and to understand their business and to learn from our experience from there to actually fix our own mistakes and also uh, move on with life and dreams that we have. True. So what are your goals for Jocom? What is your vision for the company. I mean, you're now about four or five years old. Yep. So what is your, you know, three-year, five-year plan for it? Basically, the next three to five years, we're actually trying to um, build a very strong culture for a company. And plus also, the vision of the company now is actually to say that how can we actually grow Jokon to be a very Malaysia brand-made uh, grocery store online for Malaysian. And so far, there's no Malaysian brand that actually have a chance to be this to take this car level up yeah. to the game. So, Joker wanted to become one of the chapter for the grocery market, for, for one of the best leading uh, online hypermarket for groceries in Malaysia, and to be one of the category killer in Malaysia, number one. Number two, it is actually to expand the business to other overseas and uh, other, other areas that shows that online e-commerce grocery will be the next trend that going towards the business. And the third thing that we actually, in our mission statement, is that we want to help as much SME in Malaysia to actually generate their revenue and GDP for a country by selling Malaysian products to other countries in out of, out of world. Oh, Malaysia. awesome. So through your, your platform, you'll be able to help companies here yeah. sell abroad. Correct. So one of the unique selling points that we are expanding very, very fast is the cross-border mechanics. Ah, so Jocom actually not only just having the grocery in, uh, grocery in tech in West Malaysia or East Malaysia, but we can actually help products or SMEs to send their products overseas to China, to Australia, to Indonesia, to Thailand as well. So we're actually building this uh, fundraising exercise actually to increase our attractions and also our expansion plan to actually allow the platform to be interconnected to these four countries so we can actually get other countries to buy Malaysian products from us. Oh, that's it's going to be so awesome. Yeah, because now this cross-border has been possible. Yeah. So you don't need to go to a country to buy a Japanese Coke, but you can actually right. get a Japanese Coke sent back to Malaysia for you. you. Yeah. That must have been quite a challenge to get the cross-border operations, you know, seamless. So people here can just go on a mobile and actually get that. That's that's good. Maybe you'd like to share how you um, got the inspiration to unlock the cross-border mechanism and how you went about doing it. Yeah, correct. Um, I still remember the time when Jack Ma was one of the I know that uh, I have. Not mental, but idol. I yeah, it was an idol. It was an idol. Uh, it's still an idol. Uh, Jack Ma came to Malaysia to actually work with MDEC and also run on a digital free trade zone. Yeah. And we are one of the selected companies that actually supply, able to supply top 20 brands of the Malaysian group, uh, food products and beverages to China. So we are being selected and work with the uh, government to produce the products and help the SMEs to channel their products to the cross border mechanics to China. So that's where uh, we found that um, it was track a very, very uh, good good opportunity. That's where we found that cross-border was possible. But when you go into it, there's a lot of problems that you need to fix. Yes. So with the profession, with the my my 
uh, with me and Anders and my co-founders, we found that that's a way to fix it. So eventually, I used the software that I have in exchange to actually solve the problems in China and link back to Malaysia. That's how we even link the countries up. So it was actually just a software. So I did the same way in China. I plugged my software to the Taobao, the Tmall, the Alibaba Coms, uh, the platforms in China. So the orders actually being ordered and purchased there will be transferred back to our centralized server. So we actually practice the same model of the octopus model, then try to integrate to the back end and get in back into China and Malaysia at the same time. So cross border was possible after that. Uh, and what about your price point? So if I wanted to buy, like you say, Japanese Coke, right? Compared to Malaysian Coke. Yep. What is the, the price difference? You see, at the end of the day, imported goods to Malaysia is always much more expensive than right. buying locally. Yeah. Because why? They are special. Yeah. Because they require tax and they require a lot of import duties. But the best part of this is Malaysia actually doesn't really cost you a lot of tax. Malaysia is a country that actually takes in almost 90% of the world products into Malaysia, yes. except prohibited goods, okay? okay, like guns and firearms and etc. So um, the products that come in from uh, Japan to Malaysia is always a bit higher in, in, in value, but it's actually very, very, very competitive price. It's not going to be something like a kind of coat that will cost you a hundred bucks or something like that. No, it probably will cost you seven ringgit, eight ringgit. Yeah. But it's something that you would like to have. So we know that um, Malaysia doesn't have very high tax on imported goods. Hence, that's why, except those are like cars and etc. But for food and beverages, it's something that is actually very unique. So usually about 20 to 30 percent markup uh, for the, the resellers and etc. But of course, I guess it's still a very reasonable price. Yeah, and and the and the point is you can actually get it sent yeah. to your doorstep. I yep. think that's the main point. Having Correct. a product that is abroad sent to your doorstep yep. with a touch of a we have a we have, we have a customer was actually asking us, hey, how do I get a fish oil three thousand uh uh three thousand milligram of fish oils from Australia? I said yes, you can get it on our platform. So today, yes, we actually activated it. We actually have a three thousand milligram of fish oils that you can capsules that you can buy from our platform. They're sent from Australia direct to Malaysia. Wow. So, so you, which are the countries that you can actually do that? China? China, Australia, Indonesia and Thailand. Wow. And and what is your um, goal number of countries? Global? No, we, I think we're going to take in into ASEAN level. And ASEAN. then, although we are being invited by Amazon and eBay to be listed to them as well, but yeah. I felt that we're not ready for the US market yet. And I think Southeast Asia is still the best growing point. Yes. After this round of fundraising, probably after this expansion plan, we felt, we felt that it's going to be a much more stronger way for us to expand to US and UK as well. Yeah. And I believe that there's, there's still Malaysian who resides in the US and UK that who likes to eat our yes, Malaysian correct. food as well. So it's a cross border is actually always possible. Yeah. That's, um, I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, Thanks. So let's move on to your fundraising then. Uh, yep. Currently, <coughs> your, um, Jocom is on pitch in, uh, aiming to raise 3 million. Um, in exchange for equity. So maybe before we get into the, the offer itself, mm -hmm. maybe you can tell us about your traction to date? Yep. Um, previously, when we actually on pitching, I think 2018, we actually did about 20 million ringgit. And also last year, we did about 16 to 18 million ringgit unaudited. I think last year was a bit, economy was a bit weak, but we still managed to be there. Yeah, too bad. Not like until like the other side who probably fall off the roof. But uh, for Joko actually, because it's a grocery market, yes. and people still need to eat, and it's still a recurring model that you see them buy your household products, your daily products, usage and everything. So our attractions are still there. And so far, we have 60 men, men staff, and also having about close to um, uh, 15 trucks that are actually running around Ho Klang Valley. Oh, wow. And delivering to doorsteps, and making sure that everyone of us are in safe condition uh, most of us are actually wearing masks as well and everything else. So basically, Jokong has actually been growing tremendously. Since we started, we grew about 400%. Uh, we started at um, grow, having the first year revenue at about 800,000. And then our second year actually at 5 million. Then after that, we grew in the third year about 13. And then now we actually at 20. So GMV, yeah, not too bad, but we felt that we can grow more. And we knew that it's time for us to do some expansion plan. Yes. And grocery market will be actually expanding and very trendy. There are a lot of players who try to get into this this uh, this 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 industry. 
but of course in Malaysia itself for the top 20 brands and 30 brands actually reverse hence that's why it's actually very very unique when you start to work with someone that actually already given them tractions it's very hard to change so we, we found that uh, the brands are very supportive and we are one of the guys who sell like um, you ask me why why Milo sell better than anything I mean why Milo can sell so much as well and why Hanako can sell so much as well it's just both of these products are actually well known in Malaysia home ground and most of the household will know this brand and it's quite powerful brands that actually sell so basically we sell really um, really really every week we have orders and every day we have orders and I still remember the time that we sell toilet rolls that my whole office is full of toilet rolls <laughs> and the warehouse has no place to put as well yeah. so um, those are times that those are great times and that's where we actually wrap up to really high revenue so we have, we have been growing from um, three to four years and seriously thinking I think I didn't expect myself to actually have accumulated more than like um, 50 to 60 million of GM, revenue GMV that done so far it's kind of like crazy I thought like so small company like us should be growing like so aggressively but I felt that time passed really fast yes so I think the question that I mean I have and certainly a lot of people have is if you have 20 million in your GMV why do you need to raise funds ah okay you see basically we knew that um Pichin is actually going to be one of the, one of the best performed in, in, in Malaysia. Oh, uh, thank thanks you, to thank Pichin you. and else. We wish that Pichin can actually drive us more marketing and branding as well. Yeah. Number two, we actually not to just say that uh, we want to just raise so little money. It's yeah. not because of that. It's because these are times that we actually want to let our friends and family members and also our close friends and good friends have a chance to know that we are actually also in the market as well. Yeah. And we also want to make sure that they have a chance to actually have their last um, investment with us to make sure that when we grow, don't say that I didn't ask you guys to come in right. last time. Yes, yes. yes. And also the third thing that we actually want to do is actually because we we have been doing a lot of um, um, rebranding mm -hmm. and marketing as well. So due to that, previously we're hiding behind the platforms and now it's time for us to show up and rebrand ourselves and remarket ourselves into the market. That we are also one of the grocery players that in the market. Not only just the few guys that you see in the market or you heard about, but it's time to you to say that, hey, Jokong is coming up too, man. And you better watch out, you know, when you have things. So, yeah, everyone actually has their own secrets and their own profiles. But for this round, it's actually just to make sure that Malaysia, there's a Malaysia brand that exists, that exists here to raise this partial of the funds that actually for other friends and family members, and even those who believe and supported us and have a chance to invest in us. If I go to the FI or the PE guys yeah. and everything and we see as well. Okay, excellent. Do you want to go through your offer in a bit more detail for our viewers? Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess uh, for our ACF offerings, we have about we are we are doing about we are raising about one million, like up to three million, and our valuation our pre valuation is about fifty seven million, and we are raising three million after post will be about close to sixty million if we have a chance to raise to three million. Then of course uh, our one thousand per shares is about three thousand eight hundred ringgit. So you're looking about one share is three eighty. So we hope that uh, everyone can invest a bit on this. Uh, even if it's three thousand eight, it's gonna be three eighty, or it's gonna be like half the value mm -hmm. or whichever. Just to support us and support Jocom to understand that we are the one that actually the Malaysian brand that actually can disrupt the Malaysian uh, grocery market industry. So uh, investing in us, so hopefully that this will bring you a very good value investment for long term and although it's 3008 hopefully that we can actually give you back a very good ROI in the next 3 to 5 years down the road right that's the offering I think it's good yes uh, any last words Joshua um, being a startup or being an entrepreneurship you must not give up and every one of us will actually love to take on challenges and take on challenge, uh, take on pressures and of course all the while all people have been doing is that you have to really go through the hard times and go through the low times and no matter what happens never give up and don't forget your dreams that you want to build and don't blame others and make sure that you continue to fulfill your own dream in your own spirit and your own entrepreneurship spirit as well such words of wisdom, seriously, passion and perseverance is what has brought Jokong to a 20 million ringgit company. 
Um, Jocom is currently live on Pitch In. Yep. Uh, don't forget to log on on our website www.equity.pitchin.my and invest in them now for as little as three thousand eight hundred ringgit. Uh, that's all from us today at Pitchside with Founders. Until next time, thank you. Thank you.